Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is Camper Van Conversations with Bill. Hello. This is Bill. Hello. We're in a camper van. Yes. And today we are talking about... Politics for a change. Yesterday, the uh, British Parliament voted for a general election. The 12th of December, just before Christmas. And everyone's hoping that it's going to solve Brexit. But Bill, is it? No. I mean, the message that I would really give people is to go out and campaign. Yes. And obviously register to vote and vote. Um, but um, old-fashioned campaigning is really cool. You have to speak up. Old-fashioned campaigning is really cool. And you get to meet some cool people. And it really does make a difference as well. I can't vote in the UK. But you can campaign. You go knocking on doors. I could. And you could tell the British how to vote. Yeah, I'm sure they would take really very kindly to a foreigner telling them how to vote. Anyway, the message of this video is, if you are in the UK and you are eligible to vote, go and register first of all, if you're not already registered. You might not realise that you are eligible to vote in the UK because um, you don't have to be necessarily a UK national in order to vote in general elections in the UK. If you are from a Commonwealth country and you're living in the UK, you're eligible to vote. If you're from Ireland as well, you're eligible to vote. So um, it's always worth checking because you might be able to vote in the UK but not realize it. Second, like Bill said, is to get other people to register to vote and to get other people to vote and if you want to campaign for a political party then that means getting other people to vote the way that you think they should vote. I campaigned in 2017 and I didn't really have to have any deep political conversations on the doorsteps with people it was mostly just encouraging them to to go to their polling station uh, stuff like that's very useful and if you want to get involved with something like that just contact a local party that, that um, you are aligned with. Uh, if you're not aligned with any particular party but you hate Brexit, hate aus austerity, uh, like public services, uh, like more money in your pocket, unless you are a millionaire, um, pick whichever party is most likely to beat the Conservatives in your constituency or a nearby constituency. Yeah, because you are actually not going to campaign in our constituency, but in the constituency two constituencies over, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to be campaigning in the constituency where I work because our constituency... <coughs> so, I mean, this pretty much just gives away what constituency we live, we live in, if I say this. Does that matter? I, uh, I, no. No. Our constituency is a marginal between Plaid Cymru and Labour. It is fine. Yeah, so, so you're campaigning somewhere where you can campaign oh, against the Conservatives. Kind of unseat a Tory. I've decided that for this general election, I'm entirely um, non-partisan, <laughs> except the Tories are shit. Yeah. So the the UK um, voting system is barely democratic. It's very, very rigged. It, 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 depending on where you live, your vote might just not count at all um, because... There is a first-past-the-post voting system. I believe it's a similar situation in America, but I'm not entirely familiar with the American voting system. So if you live somewhere that is a marginal seat, then you can decide which of the two leading parties in that seat you prefer. But really, especially if you favor one of the smaller parties, then your vote is pretty much non-existent. And uh, that is something that... I was surprised when I moved here that it didn't bother more people because it really bothers me. We had, we had a referendum on alternative vote ages ago, um, which is the equivalent of you're currently being punched in the genitals, would you like me to punch you in the face instead? And a lot of people thought, well, if I'm getting punched anyway, <laughs> might as well keep being in the genitals. Yeah, alternative vote. That was a weird one. I remember that. Um, two thousand and nine ish. But the parties, the, the parties of the time, decided that because we turned down being punched in the face, we must really like being punched in the testicles and no or other genitals. 
Well, and no alternative to being punched in the genitals must be considered. It doesn't help that the people making the decision about the voting system are the people who benefit from the voting system. Yeah. So get campaigning, get involved, do your thing. Um, getvoting.org is a tool from Best for Britain that if you are of a Remain or sensible persuasion uh, will help you to choose where to vote. Because leave, you've got Tories or Brexit Party job done. If you like Remain, you have um, Labour, uh, Lib Dems, Plaid Cymru, SNP, Green mm. Party, um, various independents, whatever. SNP, did I say SNP? You did say SNP. Okay. They're really good. I like SNP. You're not in Scotland though, in so who really cares? really good in the Commons. Um, yeah, so you've got a bunch of parties who are in some measure uh, Remain um, or referendum in the case of Labour. And... Uh, the vote gets split between all of these parties. So getvoting.org, you put in your postcode and it will tell you uh, how tactically, vote, what the best, tactically what the best vote yeah. is to get a Remain MP. I'm also a fan of, uh, what is it, the, the website that takes you through a questionnaire to figure out which party your political opinions are most lined up with. Probably hasn't been updated for 2019 yet. No, but it will be. Um, so if, by the time this video comes out, if the, that website has been updated, I will put a link to that in the description box. I'll oh, also put possibly... a link. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your spiel. Sorry. Do you want to get finished? I'll also put a link to the website that Bill mentioned, Get Voting. Getvoting.org. Getvoting.org. In case you missed it when I just said it, there will be a link in the description box as well. Sorry. So, I don't know how useful the quiz thing's going to be this time because we're having a pre-Brexit general election, which means it's going to be a proxy for a second referendum, which is what really should be happening. Yes. So, really, it's going to be remain or leave lines for a lot of people. Yeah, but what you have to remember, Bill, is not everyone cares about Brexit as much as we do. No. I mean, look at us, we're in a camper van in Europe because of Brexit. So, yeah, for, for some people, it might not be about Brexit. You know, I believe, I mean, I haven't met anyone, but I believe there might be some people who don't care about Brexit, who don't care if we leave, we stay, whatever deal happens. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some people actually genuinely do not have an opinion on Brexit. But even if not, I mean, the Tories have lurched pretty far to the right. Yes. And that's... They're kind of polarising as well. Even if you're not that fussed about Brexit, you might care about austerity and police cuts. And social school, care. School cuts, social care cuts, NHS cuts. Johnson is pledging to undo some of those cuts. Um, I don't believe him. I don't believe anything that he says. No. Um, so even then, it, even if it's not remain or leave lines, you're probably voting on the lines of Tory or not Tory. And that's the same. Well, no, because some people, oh, I, I really, I mean, I'm not expecting the Brexit Party to get any MPs. Oh, no, the Brexit Party will do really well. If you want Brexit, you should vote for the Brexit Party. That's why it's called the Brexit Party. I don't think they're going to get any MPs, but it would be... Unless you help them. <laughs> you can do it. You can get the Brexit Party elected. You say you say Prime Minister Farage. No, no, no. You say that the Brexit Party is going to take votes from the Conservatives, right? Mm, but they no. will also take votes from Labour. They will. They will. Votes that would otherwise be taken by the Tories. I don't. I th I believe there is a section of the population that would never, ever, ever vote Tory, but will happily vote Brexit Party. That are normally Labour voters. I think those people, if the Brexit party wasn't there, would either vote UKIP, obviously, and if UKIP wasn't there, they wouldn't vote at all. Yeah, it's a weird thing, but it is. I mean, I couldn't vote for the Conservatives. They're so right-wing and horrible, so I'll vote for a party that's more right-wing and horrible. Yeah, but the Brexit party, it's in the name, is a single-issue party, so it's kind it's of fine. It's not. They've got policies. <laughs> what? Yeah, they're going to um, take away the tax on inheritance, inheritance tax. They're going to take that away. Okay. That's a policy. Well done. Inheritance tax affects anyone inheriting something like £750,000. Not me. Oh, no, 350. It's, I think it's £350,000. So if you inherit more than £350,000, that gets taxed. And to help working people... What? 
Oh. To help all the working people who inherit hundreds of thousands of pounds, Brexit Party is going to take away inheritance tax. Hmm. I remember there was one Brexit Party policy I liked. I think it was probably proportional was representation. Proportional representation. Okay. Yeah, we've done that. So. General election coming. You're all excited. Are you excited though, Bill? I'm sanguine. I um. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I wish it was a referendum. Because what's going to happen is people are going to treat it as a referendum if it goes their way, and they're going to not treat it as a referendum if it doesn't go their way. Um, people yeah. interpret general elections whichever way they like, you know. So, for example, uh, when the uh, election happened in 2017, everyone was saying 80% of people voted for a party that agreed to uh, implement the result of the referendum. Oh. The EU ones were even worse, remember that? The Brexit party won those, so it's like, everyone must vote Brexit because Brexit won in more constituencies than anyone else. Yeah, but they got quite a low percentage of the vote compared to Remain supporting parties. But but Brexit party won, so they must want it. But yeah, let's look at the let's look at the percentage of votes for, for Lib Dems. They did really well, so people must want to remain. But then how do you count Labour? What does that mean? Because Labour were kind of in the middle. Um, it didn't work. It was dumb. Um, yeah. And I think the best analysis you can make of the um, EU election uh, results is that the, part the country is pretty much still split 50-50-ish. And it always yes. has been. Yes. Well, since 2016. Before then, nobody cared. Yes. But if there was a second <laughs> referendum, that would have hopefully a very clear and precise question on it, um, rather than a general election which everyone is going to put their own spin on it, and none of which actually represent what the country wants. The country wants to leave. Will of the people. There has already been a people's vote. How about, have you had that, that one? There was one word on that ballot paper and it was leave. They just want us to get on with it. I mean, if, if you want to say any of those things to us, that's cool. But uh, as you do, please define what it is. And... Um, if you want to leave, that's cool, but please say where you want to go after. So that was Camper Van Conversations with Claudia and Bill. See you next time. Thank you for watching. And why you did. Bye.